right, so welcome back. Um, so this week we're going to work through Chapter 7, Object Snap, and Auto Track. Um, a few assigned assignments from it. So I'm just going to flick, and the first one we'll do of the three will be number one. Okay, this guy. So it says, draw the part view shown using object snap mode. Save the drawing as P71. Looking at it, um, you know, it, it's kind of daunting, right? There's only two dimensions and all this stuff. Uh, but in the premise of it, we're going to draw the circle. We'll do a polygon with the triangle option. Make it tangent to the edges. And then we'll do uh, circles from there. We can do the line snapping. And that's how we'll produce the whole shape. So let's just get into it. Uh, this one is going to be Imperial. So let's start with that circle with a diameter of 4.5. 4 we'll do 17, uh, 11 for our start point. So I'll just type in 4.50. We'll choose our Polygon option from the drop down. Uh, total side of 3. Then we'll choose our center. We want this to be outside of the circle, so we're going to do a circumscribe. And uh, the easiest thing I find is to just turn on ortho, and you can you know pretty easily snap and know which position to do. So we're going to do here, and then we can snap it to the quadrant. Uh, from here, <clears throat> we're going to do a diameter of two circle. <coughs> we can actually just uh, same deal as always, really, just copy it from the base point. And pretty quickly paste it to the endpoint corners. And then uh, what we're going to do is align from quadrant to quadrant up here. But it's a little bit trickier on the sides, right? So like if you try to do, uh, you know, say a quadrant to a quadrant here. Well, it did a tangent, but it's going to have overlap. So there's one definitive trick that I find. Well, two. There's two tricks to do this. Um, you need it to be tangent on both sides. And so one way you can right click on object snap, turn off everything but tangent. I believe it's the only one checked. And so then, you know, you can see that deferred tangent snap object op option. And so you can choose it for both um, right click, enter or escape or whatever, and it'll create it. So that's one cool way, but that's kind of annoying, you know, turning off all your snaps because you probably don't exactly know which one should be on. Um, for the record, I like these. <clears throat> But sometimes, you know, extension may be nice, perpendicular. Uh, but these are ones I roll with generally. So the other way is you can turn on your line command. You can hover over an object, right click. Oh, well, I'll say that. Huh. Well, you're supposed to be able to do a, a snap override. Eh, you know what? It's fine. Turn this guy on. I've recently been playing with 3D a lot, and so I've uh, kind of messed with a lot of my settings a bit too much. And so you may be able to do it on your end, but generally speaking, you used to be able to right click and choose a snap override. But I'm just, I just turned off all my snap options besides tangent. That works fine. And then you can choose your two deferred tangents like it's nothing. Um, one question I get a lot. <clears throat> And uh, the answer is no, it, it's not the same. But some people, they like to draw a line. They'll choose just a random spot. They'll choose a tangent. And then they'll go back to this one and make it tangent. And uh, they think, oh, you know, it looks great. It does, but it's actually not the same. So even though it looks like it's right, you still got to do it the other way. So just make sure the only tangent is on on your snaps and you choose two deferred tangent snap options and then turn all your settings back on and you're good <clears throat> now let's see this guy is a hidden line so we'll put it on the hidden layer and these lines here for the polygon are center then we need to add in our center marks as is customary <clears throat> oh, and the center on the big guy. Yep. And so, you know, from that, you've already got number one. So we'll go ahead and jump to the next one. 
and uh, it's gonna the dimensions are big but it's actually in inches and I'll explain so let's see so we're looking at number five uh, so it says draw the column base detail shown the thickness of the column is a half inch save the drawing is p75 and so what this is really actually representing it's a it's like a rough version but if you were to be uh, working with structural steel you would have uh, things called structural tubes <coughs> and so a structural tube uh, you know looks about like yeah, like these. You may have seen it somewhere in a building. Pretty much everything uses structural tubing or angle or something of the sort, but it's essentially a round rectangle, right? And, um, you know, instead of having it all rounded on the corners, it's a little bit of effort, so they just make it square. But um, if you consider that this is basically a top view of the tube welded to what is a square plate with holes, um, maybe it's a little easier for you to visualize. And that's also why it's so large, you know, so... Um, tubing comes in, you know, various sizes. This one in particular is a 10 by 10. So the plate has to have room to be bigger for the holes. So even though it's like 16 inches long, this is actually in inches. And obviously it does denote that, but just in case you're wondering why it's so big. Okay, so let's get into it. We'll start with the bottom left of it. And I'm going to have mine at like, eight by six I'm gonna start in the bottom left and I'm just gonna draw 16 over now you could technically do this in feet and inches if you wanted um, but you can't do it by default I don't think let's see if I did one foot four it doesn't understand right so if you wanted to <coughs> do it that way you could you would type in units and then you could change your length to be um, let's see Probably architectural. Let's see. So that does sixteenths. Yeah, you could probably do engineering as well. I would probably just put it on fractional. Well, no, I take that back. It needs to be architectural. That way you got the feet in there. And so if you wanted to do that, you know, you could. And so we could go back and start um, another grid snap. And choose ten six now. And so I'll do one foot four inches. Notice you have to have. The apostrophe and the double apostrophe to denote that and then it allows us to draw it like that so if you'd rather that that's fine um, I'm actually not not a big fan of uh, doing that so I'm personally gonna switch it back but it, at least you know how to right so I'll choose a point 11 by 6 seems fine and so 1 foot 4 inches is 16 inches long <coughs> And then it's a square, so we'll go up 16, and then it's over 16, and down 16. It's actually quite large, so let's uh, let's move it down a little bit if we can. Yeah. Something like that, right? Okay, and so from here, um, if we're looking, it's 3 inches from the outside to the inside and it's typical so we'll do an offset of three inches well, actually you know what we'll do we'll just do the polygon command how about that so we'll do the number of sides as four we will try to get the object snap tracking to give us some help here and so if you can kind of tell what I'm doing is um, trying to hover over both yep just like that if you hover on both enough and you keep passing like you know from this way over and you go this way down eventually you'll get that suggestion point where they meet just like that and so circumscribe again because we want the outside value and then we're going to specify um, from the middle of the polygon to the outside so that's five and if you're not sure if it looks right you can always just do a quick dimension like I'm going to do to double check and let's see it says the thickness is a half inch so We'll do an offset of 0.5, and bam. Pretty cool that it actually creates the um, the shape, but you know it does because it's a polygon, which is why we chose to do a polygon. So now, um, the last thing we need to do is just produce our holes. <clears throat> They're uh, 1.5 inches from the outer edge. <coughs> All 
right? And so we need a diameter hole of 1.5. Now, if you notice in this case, I actually turned off my um, intersection earlier. So if you're having problems, make sure your intersection is on. And we'll make it 1.5. Um, we will copy that from the base point of the center. And we'll just sling it to all of our crosshairs. Okay. So... Um, now we can go and put in our center marks and we can call this one done. Lovely. Okay. So the next one is a little more complicated. Um, number eight. <coughs> it's on the other page. Draw the pressure cylinder shown. Use the arc option of the ellipse command to draw the cylinder and save the drawing as P78. I actually really like this one. You know, if you go and you look at, um, uh, well, for the heck of it. I think they really dive into a lot of cool concepts here. You could kind of see it in that one picture. Expansion tanks. You know, this is a common thing if you work in like um, piping industry, but essentially it's a pipe with instrumentation and it's got fill and exit holes. You're probably more familiar with like, um, I actually don't even know what they do, but outside at some people's houses, they have like a, a propane tank or something. I guess it's probably for some form of heating, but you know, they have a, a tank, not completely different. The difference is their heads are very round rather than elliptical shape, but essentially, you know, they're trying to show some real world stuff that you actually may end up doing at your job. And so that's pretty cool. So, um, conceptually we're going to draw the rectangle. We will draw a line so that we can make our arcs and then we'll draw some geometry to get our circle and delete it out and uh, call it a day. So we'll start off with an inches template. <coughs> I'm going to do um, same old, same old, turn on, turn on um, ortho and, and choose a good snap point here. So we'll do 12 by eight and I'm going to make the length, the length of the rectangle. So it'd be four, 2.5, four, and I'll just close it. Okay, so from here, um, we've got the general boundary. I'm just gonna draw the line from the center point of the, uh, the vertical line. I'm gonna draw it a half inch out. I'll do it on one side, and then I'll show you a different way to do it for the other uh, head. I think it's cool to try to show different ways to go about something, right? So uh, it says to do the, um, how did it phrase it? use the arc option of the ellipse command. Well, that's not really exactly accurate. So if you choose ellipse, there is, you know, no arc option, right? Um, it kind of automatically defaults to center, as you can see there. So actually what you do is you hit elliptical arc. And the way it works, it actually still works just like when you make an ellipse, which you may or may not have done at this point, but um, then it allows you to trim off the excess. So what I'll do is I'll choose, as it's specifying there, the axis endpoint. So I'll choose the first one. And then I'll choose the other axis endpoint, which will be essentially the full length of whatever you're making. So now you see we've got a circle, but if I move inward, it pinches, right? And so I can just choose for our uh, minor axis, I can just choose the endpoint of that line we drew. But then the next thing it's asking us for is like, where do we want to trim off and what do we want to trim? So like, it's usually a guess for me, <laughs> to be honest. Um, you usually choose this end and go down to this end and it cuts this off. Or when you choose this end and go down to this end, it cuts that one off. Usually I just, if I got the wrong inputs, I'll repeat the command and try again. But I'm going to go with this one. And so in theory, when I move my mouse to the right, hopefully it's trimming away that. Yep, it is. It's more obvious in a uh, polar tracking. But like as you can see, when I move my mouse directionally, depending on where I click, it'll trim it. So I chose this one to start, but now I'm going to choose this one down here and bam, it trimmed off the excess. So in theory, that means when I draw this one, it's probably the opposite. And so I said, I was going to show you how to do this one different. If you put it on ortho mode and you move your mouse out, instead of having to like click the end of a line, you can just type in that 0.5 value we were given and it'll create it. And so I believe that whenever I trim this one, I probably need to start with the bottom endpoint. And so when I move my mouse inward, you can see it's going to trim away this and I can just choose up here. 
And so from here, you know, we, we've actually got most of it. <coughs> it's um, the center circle is perfectly centered. So, you know, I can just draw a line from the midpoint and then a line from midpoint to midpoint here. And we can draw our circles. So we've got 0.52, or wait, nope, I'll take that back, sorry, 0.5 diameter. And then we can do an offset of 0.062. And it says that, um, so the, the 0.5 dimension is this guy. So the wall thickness, you're actually going to offset outward. Because it says, you know, 0.5 inside. So just confirm I got that right one. I did. And so from here, you know, same old, same old. We'll just go in and put our center mark. And optionally, if you would like, you could also do uh, a center line across it. Grab the square grip, pull it to the end of the part. And that would be fine too. Cause you know, technically, you know, we talked about it, but it's a tank, so it's cylindrical. So technically you would have a center line all the way across it as well as the center mark in the middle. But yeah, um, so that's, that's it for this lesson. If anybody has any questions about what we're drawing, just let me know.